World War One, World War Two, the kitchen with your parents both fighting in it. Top ten messed up battles in history. Sometimes mom and dad's fight, it happens. Number 10, Battle of LA. Remember the 1940s? Okay, well, maybe not. I mean, if you did, then you might not be watching this video, or you would need assistance from a strapping young grandson, such as myself, to help you with searching on the internet and whatnot. It's okay, I, I help the old people, I, I, that's what I do. Well, for the folks that didn't know, the world was at war, and passions were a little high. America, in a nutshell, said they weren't getting involved the second time around until Japan came, well, they kicked their sandcastle over. And by sandbox, I mean they made Pearl Harbor go boom. So naturally, a few months after the Pearl Harbor incident in February of 1942, the lovely West Coast city of LA was put into shock and horror when unidentified flying objects appeared in the night sky. Air raid sirens blared and anti-aircraft artillery began to light up the night sky, as this was suspected to be a Japanese invasion. Well, it wasn't actually, it was actually a, a false alarm, so no need to panic, right? <laughs> Maybe. Number 9. The Chosen Few in the beginning of the Cold War, it was clear that the West had some spooky, scary communist enemies to deal with. And almost immediately after the world had sent Germany packing, the Soviet Union was acting up. And then China, uh, and then Korea. Well, that was it. We had had it. The West and America had enough of communism spreading. It was time to contain it. So American and UN forces went to Korea to have a discussion at the 38th parallel. One group of Marines at the Chosen Valley had a chewy perspective of the event. When this group of Marines at Chosen Valley radioed in for a supply drop, they used the code word Tootsie Rolls as it was a code for mortar shells that they so desperately needed. Well, apparently the radio operator didn't get the memo and had an actual crate of Halloween's second least favorite candy scent. Besides candy corn, no one likes that stuff. But being the Marines, they used it to their advantage. And after being chewed up and placed over holes and gaps, the chocolatey treat made for a great filler, especially after freezing in the freezing cold weather at Chosen Valley. Cool story. Number eight, Jenkins Ear. The best way to describe life in the new world in the 18th century is aggressive corporate negotiations. The new world was full of plantations, trade, and YouTube's least favorite S word. So, also naturally, the British Empire and its Royal Majesty wanted a slice of the Caribbean action. Trouble is, the Spanish had been there longer, and at the time, their presence was much more powerful. Well, the British had the means to despanify the area, and all they really needed was a reason, because, you know, that makes war more palatable, right? Sure. Well, that's when they were presented with Robert Jenkins, a man who had his ear cut off by a bunch of Spanish thugs who raided his ship years prior. Turns out this was enough cozy belly to start a war and fight over an ear. Hence the name in English, the war became the Battle of Jenkins' Ear. That's so weird. That's so strange. Imagine a guy, right, he's got his ear lobbed off. It's on to go. Let's go. I guess that's a reason. Sure. Well, how long ago did this happen? Oh, it was like 10 years ago. Right, good enough for us. Get back in. Number seven, Charge at Creasy. The Charge at Creasy can be described as a Hail Mary. One final push, the last card. It's a 1v6 and search and destroy on high rise in modern warfare, too. Bottom of the ninth and bases are loaded. If Hollywood has taught us anything in life, it's that these events always work out for our hero. Well, sometimes real life isn't like Hollywood movies. Take John of Bohemia, for instance, your classic 1300s guy. Marrying his way into royalty, a warrior, a knight, except poor John was blind in one eye due to a medical condition. Poor John. Well, at the Battle of Creasy, his bravery was put on full display. John had his horses tethered to other knights, because he was blind, as they made their last effort dash into the enemy, or charge, if you will. They, they didn't make it. It didn't work out. And the crazy like, right, I'm blind and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tie your horse to my horse and we're gonna run straight at the enemy. Number six, Napoleon in Moscow. During the Corsican ogre's European tour, he led himself into Russia. More specifically, he made it all the way to Moscow. Uh-oh. This was impressive for a couple of reasons. One, because he had defeated other European powers with really little effort and he was about to defeat Russia. Finger quotes about to defeat Russia. Back in the day, there was this notion that if you control the nation's capital, you win. 
Well, he had Moscow, but it was more of a Pyrrhic victory. Russia had enacted a military tactic called Scorched Earth, and it wouldn't be the last time they used it. Basically, back in the day, militaries relied heavily on the lands they took for resources, food, shelter, and supply lines. Well, you can't control that if there's no land to take. So Russia destroyed their land, food, fields, and really anything that would have been helpful along the way as they retreated. Also, the winters were very brutal and cold, and the French were not prepared. So mix that together, and uh-oh, awkward. Number five, the Battle of Mogadishu. Here's a modern one for you. It was a simple job. Grab two high-value targets, known collaborators of a corrupt Somali leader who's basically just a dictator. Things were going great until two $6 million Black Hawk helicopters were downed by enemies on the ground. An in-and-out operation that was supposed to last no longer than an hour. Tops, I swear, I promise. It actually turned out to be an overnight 16 hour rescue op that saw 18 Americans lose their life, known as the Black Hawk Down situation, or operation I guess. So what's the lesson on this one? I, well, I'm not really sure to be honest, but what I do know is that it left the mark on 90s history and American military snafus. Uh oh. <laughs> Number 4, Castle Itter. Okay, good guys wear one outfit, bad guys wear another. If the soldier in front of you sounds German and it's World War II, then it's probably the enemy. Chances are. It all makes sense, right? Well, the Battle of Castle Itter makes no sense. When World War II was coming to its climactic close, Americans and Allied forces were coming from the west, and all of Mother Russia was coming from the east. A lot of Germans fought to the bitter end, but the smart ones knew it was time to jump ship. You can see it was falling apart. And in the case of Castle Inner, they actually joined forces with Americans and allies to defend high value prisoners from an SS detachment who still thought Germany could win. Spoiler alert, they could not win. It was over. And the joint force would see a victory. That's kind of cool. That's a cool story. I, again, where's the movie of that? Where's the movie? Put me in the movie. Someone made me famous. Let's go. Hollywood directors, I'm talking to you. Number three, Sterling Bridge. There was one time growing up I had a super important test to take at school. I don't remember what class it was, but I remember studying extra hard for it. I mean seriously, I opened the books and I hit them hard, brother. Harder than my little heart could desire. I studied my little heart out. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was really hard, correct? And now I'm thinking about it, it's probably math. Anyway, well, when I went to bed, I knew that I was going to be ready for that test. The trouble is, I woke up at 9.57. School started at 8.30. Not only did I miss the test, but when I retook it, I didn't do as well as I thought. Well, this is the case of the Battle of Sterling Bridge, except there wasn't really any awkward high school stuff going on. It was just more of a serious battle for independence. The very famous William Wallace and the Scottish were at odds with the English, as you'll find in history they do that. Well, that morning the British general slept in, and Wallace, seeing an opportunity, seized it. And seized the day and victory for Scotland. The lesson here? Set your alarm, folks. Don't miss the battle. Set your alarm. Number two, Operation Cottage. Canada and the US have been friends for a very long time, and we will probably be friends for a very long time. We have apologized profusely for burning down the White House. We're sorry, eh? Didn't mean to do that, bud. I'm sorry there, guy. Sorry, friend. Jeez. However, did you know that in a classic World War II military snafu, Canadians and US soldiers fought each other? Kiska Island, Alaska, it had been occupied by a small group of Japanese forces, which is kind of a weird story on its own. How did that even happen? So we went to go kindly ask them to leave, as you do. Trouble is, when we got there, there were no Japanese, and in a very confusing battle after landing on two different points of the island, our two great nations fought each other, where sadly lives were lost. It was rough. It was sad. There was like, it was like 30 Americans and like four Canadians. I don't know if we're just good shots or what. I don't know what it is, buddy. Number one, Bull Run. The Civil War. It's the one that shaped America. Brother versus brother. And it's what your dad reads about in his spare time. I don't know. We, dad just do that. Bull Run is one of the most famous battles from the time. However, I don't want to focus on the battle itself as I've nerded out too hard on history already today in this video. No! Why am I talking about this and why is this in the number one spot? Well, that's because of spectators. Yes, that's right, spectators. Wealthy folks would often come to large battles like Bull Run on a disadvantage point out of the splash zone, literally, and view the ensuing horror that was the Civil War. And before you even ask, yes, they brought food and a picnic to enjoy the show. 
maybe don't watch that. Just an idea next time. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, oh well. Anyways, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for me today. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe here at Bumblebee. And if you too want to read about the Civil War, then check out my social somewhere down below. Check out my Instagram and my Twitch. I stream sometimes. This is fun. This is it's a lot of fun. The way you want. Anyways, guys, I love you so much. I love you so much. See you soon. Bye, little honeybees. Bye. After being the hell am I trying to say? Anyway. Number one, just send her, buddy. Just send her.